All right, so um, not much for tech support, uh, and it's been a minute since I um, shot the last assembly video for one of these uh, one of these things. So I thought I would take some time to catch up on what's changed, and while well, I put this one together, so uh, start. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, this is janky, but, uh, you know, just as a matter of parlance, um, like, I refer to this, like, the outer assembly of the, you know, the prop is the box, uh, the most decorated hand is the hour hand, the least decorated hand is the minute hand, I refer to this as the viewfinder, um, this clutch spring and the bottom of the box that you see, um, I refer to that as the spiral, uh, and then this upper mechanism, I refer to the compass. I don't know if it's like a wayfinder or what, because I haven't seen the movie yet, but, um, so anyway, the names of things out of the way, just wanted to, uh, kind of illuminate, um, and that might make the terrible naming in the printables or GitHub, wherever you're finding this, uh, a little better. Oh, and then, uh, outer inset, um, inner inset loop. And yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, the the kind of the glyph disc and all that will we'll go through that as I put it together. Um, this one I'm putting together was um, you know like a 240 millimeter build, which isn't normal, so it's glued and pegged together. And if you look uh, wherever you find the stuff, uh, like GitHub, I guess is probably the best place to find it because I don't know that I'll put the prototypes on printables, um, but it's a prototypes folder and a 240 millimeter build, and uh, yeah, kind of the background here is that like I had had a uh, 240 millimeter build that was based on fewer sides, uh, or actually more sides. So the um, the distance um, from from tip to tip was shorter, you know, because more sides, right? So um, this build no longer fits on my print bed, at least like a 256 millimeter print bed. So, um, but I wanted to remake the box assembly for uh, someone that had one of my um, boxes that had too many sides. So that's what we're doing. And I figured while I was putting it together, um, and I'm actually kind of testing some size differences here along the way, that I would record it and make a new assembly video. So that's why we're here. Uh, one thing also, so the box type differences, uh, this one is uh, kind of the Mark 1 or Mark 1.5 box, so you'll find it without, there are versions of it that have no details where you glue in the, these details, um, and there's some that have these details, in, you know, embedded. The Mark 2 box is a little thicker, um, and probably a little more proportional to what we'll see in the movie. Again, this is just like before the movie, so I haven't seen it yet. Um, but the benefit of the thickness is it allows me to create the separation in those like gears or whatever they're on the side uh, so that they don't print with quite as much, as many like little support boogers. So uh, if you see like uh, this one also, by the way, this one's like kind of short name is Fatty uh, or the Fat Box Design. So when you're to pick a box um, just kind of like that's the difference between the two one is a little bit skinnier than the other skinny in terms of height um, and that has an impact when you're deciding which one to print based on which uh, box floor you're going to go with so um, first part this is the box floor so I'm printing a like a fat design uh, the mark II design so this is the thicker fat box floor and again, this is that 240 millimeter, so it's the biggest one I've tried to do. Um, it's sort of inconvenient because it's like too big, um, but whatever. All right, um, so glyph disc, these are, so there's an undecorated version that's just for one color, um, or you can print the cutout um, and glue the two together, or if you've got two color uh, printing capability, then you can just print them together. So. First thing down, and yeah, so a lot of these details are going to get covered up. Is what it is. Nature of the beast. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Looking while well, I'm looking for a part, like a couple things uh, you might want during the assembly is like you know, like a dental pick, uh, 
because this one was um, assembled in two halves, I use like little furniture pins. These are 30 millimeter by five millimeter furniture pins for like shelving, um, just cheap metal, but uh, so strong. Um, anyway, so this is the, uh, uh, what do they call this? The disc spacer. It's the skinnier of the of those. If you scale it down from the original source, like I've got scaling guides, I usually override the height and go down to one or two millimeter. It doesn't have to be too thick. Um, and it's really just there to create uh, a lip for the... Uh, so I call this the glyph disc. This is the viewfinder. And this is a kind of a newer version. It's just slightly modified. It has some inset decorations. Um, and the point of this little washer was to give that a lip to ride on so that it can kind of rotate, right? So it just gives it a pivot point. Um, so you can, like, whatever part of this bottom of disc that you want to exhibit, uh, you can. Uh, this design is a little bit extrapolated. So, like, there's a, a screenshot of some kind of, like, wax box that they show from one of the uh, stills and uh, tried to best I could guess and you know, kind of figure out what it is. I know that this design is like hex dominant um, with a lot of like planets and astrology type like symbology in it so I went with that to try to fill in anything that I wasn't sure or couldn't make out so um, you know it's not going to be 100% film accurate but it's um, I, I think if that uh, screenshot is actually um, this part then it will be pretty close I think. Um, so next uh, we've got the spiral so this is that little like you know stand in for that clutch assembly because obviously I don't like having kind of like metal spring to put in there and this just sort of rides in there on top um, and that's it for that part. Now this one you know it's got some rough uh, supports because I had to print it like in two pieces vertically um, and then uh, just like for some reason it didn't get good layer adhesion on the first layer, but the thing is the real props gonna be heavily uh, distressed. So uh, You know, is that the worst thing? I don't know um, I don't think so. So You should basically be able to just push this down together at this point It can be a little tough at first um, But then the more you do it the easier it is and then it'll start to want to fall out So it's a little bit of a trade-off um I try to just kind of do it once and then it will just kind of ride there, right? So that's where it lives now. Awesome. And, you know, it still has enough room that you can work this, this disc around. Like, it's just it's tight, but you can, you know, kind of fiddle around. With, like, where do you want the spring and then where do you want that? Now, um... Uh, because I'm not sure, because this was kind of a prototype size, I'm not sure which size is going to be best. I'm going to guess. I printed a couple different of these posts, and I'm going to go with uh, this one. And then, uh, so this should just right in there. I would say it might be handy to have like like a little like low grit sandpaper. This is like what 120. Um, so you can, you know, kind of work on any parts that are too tight um, or that need cleanup. But yeah, that should just go in there. And again, I'm kind of experimenting because some of these parts haven't been printed before, at least not in this size. So this is a bigger spacer. I'm going to try to go back and rename the spacers after this. Uh, it's pretty tight still. This is a scaled down version of this post, but all right. So again, just trying to like, you know, make sure the inside of this washer is large enough. So I have the post relatively tight with return to tolerances in the model because I didn't want to have to glue it into the box like I want it to be removable um, but uh, you can go and modify like by a tenth or whatever on X and Y if you would like and then it'll be a little more loose but also just kind of sometimes just use something to kind of help get it in there. Alright cool. So 
Back to this. Our spacer. That's better. And now, um, I've got, this is a new part, so this is a little bit of what's going to be experimental about this. So it's a modification to this, the hour hand that gives it a little bit more detail. And what I'm just looking for is um, how, um, how far down does it engage with this, you know, side here. So it seems like I could go up a little bit from this size. Um, so in the interim, I'm going to use the smaller spacer with it. Good deal. That's better. Now, so this is the hour hand model, or the, I'm sorry, yeah, the hour hand model. And there's a simple one, the first one, and then this is like the V2, or maybe, no, I'm sorry, this is V3. So V2 adds this like little, this little bit, and then V3 attempts to add this other selector wheel. So like I can kind of tell from this, the uh, screenshots that there's this bottom uh, selector wheel that will turn and then reveal a selection within this little window and you know it's cool at this scale though um I mean, it's like really hard to get those details and get it in so like this might be another case where like a, a paper clip or well i don't know paper not a paper clip but some other household metal item might be useful uh, because once i put this in here like it's it's gonna just stick and stay and if you start twisting i think it'll probably break um, you know, but so just sort of push that in there and but what's cool about it is it gives us kind of a nice little depth, um, like extra layers to the model. So, yeah, so put that guy in there. Now it's not so tight on this side with that extra spacer, um, on the model that I'll post, I will just add a, like a extra large or extra, extra large spacer and denote which is which. Um, the small spacer goes between the two hands, uh, so that's this guy right here. This is our minute hand, and I believe this is orientation, I do believe. And then we finish that stack out with the compass, so this is uh, the compass head or compass face, and I've, you know, new model kind of have some of the inscriptions what's odd is like like that looks like it's a greek alphabet um or at least a portion of the greek alphabet and then with modifications so because like it but then phi is out of order in the like the repetitive um like pattern that's or whatever so i don't know but anyway uh I did i modeled that more or less based on the disney parks model um then we have this, uh, this is a, uh, like an inset for you to decorate the compass because I still really don't know what goes there, whether that's going to be like a, you know, like a wayfinder or, you know, some kind of like Fleur Lee or what. So for now, we just have this white disc that you can decorate to be your own. Also, by leaving it a little tight, it will also sort of kind of act like a lock washer and hold it in place. So that's why I bothered with that. This compass flourish and goes at the top. Um, and then the... Um, Alright, so details. Well, uh, one thing before you get to the details. So then we've got these uh, little, um, like the compass dial and... This is, you know, a paper clip that's been cut off and then glued. And usually it's pretty loose um, in the shaft, so I'll have to, uh, I'll usually take a little bit of leftover, like, 3D print trim material, uh, like that, and just sort of, like, push it in the hole and then push the dial in on top of it. It's kind of like you fix cabinetry with... You know, like if a screw's gone into the same hole too many times, you can break off a toothpick and then 
use that to in increase engagement. So I, I don't really like gluing that in there either. So I just, again, just add something to, you know, inside this, this post hole to, um, you know, help give it tension. All right, final bits. So um, I've got these detail pieces now. Um, let me do, uh, so the glyph ring, this is the inner inside glyph ring first. And should be able to, I guess I should have done this before assembling this stack. Um, so there's that. And it should just sort of sit in there. Like you can glue it if you want, but I think it'll just sit in there and you'll see why in a sec. Um, the Disney model has this gold ring that's built into this glyph ring, um, from what I can tell in the pictures. And um, the film model, as best I can tell, it almost looks like this, uh, um, sort of like levitated off top, you know, just a little bit above it. So what I've just, uh, what I've been doing is just print the gold ring, put a drop or two of super glue, position it in the middle, good enough. Uh, the the bowl glyph, so this is the glyph bowl model. Um, you can put your printer on um, vase mode um, for a real quick print on this or just print it however you like. Should just sit there and you'll probably want to glue it. Like there is, you could use the um, eyepiece ring to kind of hold it in place um, and it, it, it kind of will, but I, I've been just gluing them so. And then that's the thing, like once you put a, just a couple drafts of glue on this, it will inevitably kind of hold in that, uh, that inner glyph ring too. Um, so, yeah. And then the outer ring. So this is the outer inset ring. And again, so these two prints uh, are like the glyph ring. Uh, you can print just like the single color and then add the, uh, like the cutout inset on top of it, or you can do a double color, dual color print if you have that ability. This one is the trickiest of the three because some of these breaks um, actually do separate the model. So the 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 cutout, you might want to like do do an inner raft, um, like or a small inner prim to hold it together until you're ready to transfer it onto whatever solid backing material color you want to use. Yeah, uh, that should just uh, snap in there. Let me move this out of the way for now. Do, 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 do. This one is going to be tighter than the rest because it was a two piece box. It never goes together exactly right. <clears throat> this way but cool all right so that now lives inside there I did put these strings in it so like you know the person could rip it back out if they wanted to put their own decorated then but I think this ring is actually pretty close um, to the film model as far as details so anyway putting it back together what you end up with. Got our hour hand. Give it another a little bit more space. Again, center post, our compass post. We'll 
call this extra extra large um, post spacer and the models. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to use another one. All right, our hand. Might as well go ahead and place that while we're here. The small spacer. Minute hand. Compass face. The compass inset. Which you can decorate or not. And then the compass flourish. And then you finish it off with one of these uh, posts. So I'm going to say probably about that much engagement, I assume. And boom, there we go. Now. Glue the two bits down and got yourself uh, an okay uh, Dial Destiny prop, you know, considering the movie's not out yet. Uh, so yeah, in the future here, like speaking to the future after we've seen the movie, like I'm sure there's going to be details that I got wrong, but uh, since there wasn't a prop, I wanted to have something, and so now we do. And I feel like... Uh, one point I think Disney will probably come out with a pretty cool like actual mechanism like an astrolabe type like something right uh, metal metallic uh, with moving parts and gears and all of that and once they do then that will be awesome and I will be all about that as well but until then yeah not too bad for a wall hanger so uh, alright I uh, went too long uh, on this but uh, that's assembly of this uh, Dollar Destiny prop and some explanation of the weird naming. If you have any questions, uh, you know, hit me up on printables or wherever you saw this, uh, probably arcadeshenanigans.com. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.